Hello, Love Tuna family. I'm very happy to have one of our team riders here. It's Aaron. Aaron, thank Hello you so everyone. much for being here. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. Beautiful, magical spot here. Absolutely. It's for perfect. magical people. Yeah. Right? <laughs> C celebrate the, uh, the 528 Love Tuner. Yeah. Yeah, I love this thing, man. Um, I have been to your studio and and it's like cutting edge. It's it's beautiful. It's cool. But what is more important is that you are developing actually new forms of bioresonance. I think your right. studio is the best studio in the United States right now with the stuff you have in there. Uh, and you have a beautiful location. Right. Um, it helps. It right. helps, right? It definitely helps. And. Um, so I tested it myself. So when we met, you know, we, we, we tune, we talk about the love tuna, then you became a team rider. And then, then you actually showed me what you're doing. So well, I had to wait a little bit, okay. Just, you know, bring uh, you in a little bit. You're talking frequency, love tuner, 528. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. and, uh, so meanwhile, you have a display in your, in your studio, you are turning people on to the frequency, right? but you're not doing it because it's a nice gimmick. So your whole life actually was vibration and frequency and you right. started very early healing. I mean, maybe you, you tell our uh, love to the family a little bit right. about you and why you even come into this. You have been an actor and uh, so why, why are these ways and, and how did it start? Um, well, that's a, that's a very loaded question, but I'll You have to all the time it. in the world. I'll, you know? I'll compress it as much as I can. Um, well, it started when I was really young. I was around 12, and where I grew up in um, Canada, Pickering, yeah. Ontario, Canada, we were next to the largest nuclear facility, Candy Reactor. Now, if you can imagine, the building's approximately a mile long, so it's a big facility. Yeah. And the street that we were on, everyone, every second home, people were getting, you know, cancer. Yeah. And 12 years old, I'm thinking, wow, this is, this is really weird. Why are all these people on our street getting cancer? And the worst part was they didn't make a five-year program. Yeah. So they actually died of the treatment that they were receiving. And I started looking into everything. And I'm a young mind, and I couldn't understand. We could split an atom with sound, which is a frequency, yeah. blow things up, hurt people, but we can't understand what's causing infection. So that led me on the path of studying, you know, Elias Pauling, frequencies uh, to Rife, uh, Dr. George Star White, uh, Tesla. That just uh, brought me through the whole thing. Even Pythagoras he used to work with, you know, Absolutely. music. Absolutely. So all this stuff has been here for since the beginning of time mm -hmm. before you and I. So it just made sense. But let's let's look at this stuff now. Moving forward, when people go in for, uh, let's say, a review or a diagnostic, what is a diagnostic tool? What is it? A frequency measurement. CT scan, MRI, EKG, ultrasound, right. x-ray, they're all measurements of frequency. Even when they take blood, they read it with infrared light. So that's how they diagnose people. Oh, it's sure. frequency. Yeah. Can we not send what is appropriate back and correct and make the voltage go back to normal? Yeah. Well, that's been my journey. Absolutely. So that's why I'm here today. Absolutely. Because this, this is part of that journey. Yeah. Yeah. So and all that stuff led me to uh, coming here to California and uh, at a clinic in my garage. And I had all these people come in from all over the place. Now, I never advertise. Yeah. They'd just show up. And they would say, hey, you, you got to go see the guy in the garage. Mm. Now, don't Don't worry about your, you know, your uh, other guy, just go to the guy in the garage. You want that yeah. stuff fixed? So that, that kind of led me to all the stuff we're yeah. discussing while we're here and why I'm a big supporter of the love tuna. Yeah. yeah. I mean, meanwhile, it changed. The garage became a super nice studio. Yeah, I mean, pe that's a people, upgrade. People yes, are rolling sure. in because even <clears throat> I'm a friend of yours and on and off, I need to tune up, especially like before mm -hmm. I travel or whatever, I come back from something, I always like right. to check in because your technology that you have is just like, you know, it's even like if you're not sick, it's just a great maintenance thing. But what I saw is like, you have severe ill people there. I have seen people in wheelchairs, right. people with like, you know, oxygen mask. Like, it's, it's not that it's like, oh yeah, let's give it a try. I mean, these are people who are literally dying. Right. And, and they see you because the medical system as we know it failed on them. Well, 
what happens is typically people go um, and pay with insurance. And jokingly to myself, and this is my own private uh, thought in my head, but I'll share because I'm, you know, speaking, is they pay with their health. Because this is <clears throat> what is called standard medical care. Mm. Um, I'll give you a little history. I'm not sure if I shared this before. Everything was set in place, uh, and you're familiar with Dr. Reif and his technologies and stuff. Well, Reif, around 1921, he was looking at, does disease have a measurable frequency? And if so, can he find a way to view it? Mm -hmm. He creates the world's most powerful microscope. So in 1921, he builds the universal microscope. It's 31,000 times resolution. And for the very first time, you can see a virus. Something that is so small, 1 20th of a micron, which is really small. Uh -huh. To give you a comparison, on a gross uh, look, if you took the Empire State Building, that'd be the size of a red blood cell. A dime next to it would be the virus. Okay. Does it mean it's not there? Oh, no, we just can't see it. Sure. It's kind of like, we know bacteria, we can't see it, but would you take a piece of raw chicken and wash your face with it? No, because we know salmonella is potentially there. Yeah. You just can't see it. So Rife was looking at this stuff. Now the difference, this, this is the amazing feat that they had in 1921. He used glycerin to fill the tubes. So he protected the sample he was looking at. The electron microscope we use today creates such a magnitude of information and uh, field of energy, it burns or boils everything in pieces, fragments, and carcasses. Mm -hmm. So imagine I put a sample on the boiler and I turn it on to high heat. Mm -hmm. It boils everything to pieces. Sure. Okay. Yeah. His technology preserved it so he could see it while, without uh, destroying it. So he could see viruses, he could see infections. So today when we go in, we get a, a blood sample done, they grow in an aggregate, they put it out of the field of view with an electron microscope. Mm. They actually kill it while looking at it. So blood work comes back inconclusive. They just destroyed all infections. We don't know what's causing that disease. Well, we're going to create a label. This is your disease name. We're going to put a sticker on you and yeah. here's some pills and go home and think about it. So that's, that's kind of what happened. So Rife in the early 30s, 1931, he successfully helped 16 terminal ill patients with uh, something that people are fearful of, and he was able to neutralize it. And how he discovered that he could neutralize it was he was working with a human breast sample, and when he put it under his field of view, he knew it was so small that he couldn't use ordinary dye to stain it. Usually they use dye to catalog everything. He had to use a little prism, and he was shining a beam of light on the sample while he's watching it in real time through his mm -hmm. scope, okay? Mm -hmm. So when he matched the frequency of this infection, it started to bounce around. All of a sudden, he's watching this just destroy itself. He matched what he called MOR, mortal oscillatory rate, where you take the frequency and you shatter it, releases all the hydrogen. So he wrote that number down, the frequency, and that led into all of his other technologies, and he was using frequency. Mm -hmm. You know what, uh, what, what, we, what I've seen, and you showed me even like Tesla was building over 100 years ago, right. the first like kind of a prototype of a bioresonance machine. Right. And then you showed me some old samples you have from Germany. Oh, they yeah, have been, oh, they, have, they have been very far ahead with these things. But um, the frequency healing was at one point the way to go, and then something else happened where right. people recognized we can make way more money and okay, I'm going to share with that too. So I'm going to back up a moment. So that was Rife. All this stuff was happening around early 1900s and even prior to that. Mm. There was a, a group, um, this is in 1856. It was Dr. George Star White, Dr. Abrams. They were looking at, again, similar thought that Rife had, you know, something that we can't see is it causing disease. Mm. Okay. They built a little room, no bigger than a phone booth, and they wanted to test their theory. So they took a terminal, now these were allopathic doctors, 
meaning Western medicine. Mm -hmm. um, they took this patient, put them inside this room, bare feet, copper plate, and two wires would go to an adjacent room. There, somebody that was neutral would grab a paddle and be connected to the person that was ill. Mm -hmm. The minute they were connected, they felt the same discomfort, same place. Okay, so pick up the paddle. Of course, I got my there, my, my stomach, there. whatever. They repeated the process over mm -hmm. ten thousand different times with different patients, and not one person was ever allowed to talk, front door, back door type of thing. What they were showing was. It was sending extreme low frequencies across copper wire to the individual that was neutral in the other room. Mm -hmm. Alexander Graham Bell, voice over wire, copper wire, created the telephone. We use this every single day mm -hmm. in all of our technologies that we use. Everything's frequency, it's part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So we can design things to hurt or heal. And that was proven back then. So fast forward, and these are technologies, um, you know, coming up to the 1900s that were used way before Big Pharma, mm -hmm. okay? Even Thomas Edison, the future of medicine is frequency medicine. I mean, it's incredible. It's him, yeah. And he, you know, stole Tesla's technology for the light bulb. I mean, that isn't even his design, but yeah, no. whatever, kudos to him. Yeah. So at least he said, you know, frequencies are... I mean, we're happy we have light, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that, that, Nobody cares it. where it's coming from. Just, we have it, yeah, we, we use have it. it. Yeah. Brilliant uh, physician, and it took me a long... Now, I've been collecting this stuff for over 30 years. I've yeah. been researching and um, a lot of stuff you can't find because it's just been swept under the rug and destroyed or whatever. Brilliant physician. She was uh, allowed to come into the knowledge of uh, Dr. George Star White. They passed it on to her, and this is in 1915. She kind of went and studied with them. By 1928... She builds the first radio vision device. So imagine an MRI in 1928 that could see using radio waves in the body without harming it. Her funder, Thomas Edison. Yeah. They suspend that program. That's crazy, actually. They just put it off to the side. Yeah, yeah. Crazy, right? Yeah. She then starts working on another program where patients could not travel to her location because they're, you know, challenged. They had severe crisis or Adelon crisis going on, she'd have them go to the local physician, draw a vial of blood, and send it Pony Express to her. When she received, I know, it's ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. When she received the sample of blood, she put it under a frequency generator and send information into the sample of blood. So imagine a light bulb sending 880 hertz, square wave, into the sample of blood. Mm. What do you think happened to the individual that wasn't even in the same state? They got well. For sure. For they didn't sure. have that, yeah, that sure. issue. Yeah, yeah. Here's how it works. It's so simple. You take chromosome. You can only see a chromosome through mitosis when the cell is going to divide and become a daughter cell. If I take chromosome, I split it, split it apart. Human DNA is coiled around a little protein. It's called histone protein. If you unwind human DNA, it's 39.5 inches long. It's a receiver transmitter for light and sound. It's an antenna. She was sending signal here in the sample of blood and two tuning forks talking to DNA matching information. Mm. She was sending signal. That was the modem transferring energy through space and time. Einstein called this spooky action at a distance in 1928. Today it's called quantum physics. Mm -hmm. So everything's frequency. Absolutely. Military industrial complex took that. You don't know of her. Her last name was Drown. That's pretty much what happened to her career. They got rid of all of her information but they created the cell phones we use today. You have to know the coordinates or the antenna to receive information. So all these technologies we use every single day, you can thank these people that paved the way. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it, you know the, the interesting thing is we also talk about, especially in Europe, it's a big discussion already about um, 5G networks, you know, like, right. I mean, we know how harmful 3G was, 4G, but 5G is a completely game changer. It's actually Absolutely. a weapon system. And, right. and it's so interesting because, for example, my my phone shows 5EG. So people literally don't even have 5G, but they are so stoked. And this is why, you know, mobile phone companies even tell <laughs> right. people, oh, it's already 5G, it's not even yet. But they don't tell people how dangerous it is, you know. No. And there's a lot of studies out there. We looked at the Tesla crystals that you use yeah. to protect. We know from Love Tuner 
higher body swings in the frequency, the less it gets impacted by these negative waves. Absolutely. But you know, I think it's also good for our listeners and for our viewers that you give them a little bit of an impact, mm. what it really means when a phone rings and when you pick up 5G okay. and what the difference is between 4G and 5G, where this whole journey is going to. Well, the difference, uh, 4G, 5G, it's a multiple, so it's an exponent factor. Um, let me break it down this way. This water right here would have a frequency. Same with the glass, everything has a frequency. Measurably, water has a frequency of 2.45 gigahertz. That's the frequency of water. Okay. So that is a very high frequency. Okay. That's in the billion hertz cycle. When you take moisture in food and you put it in a microwave, what happens is the microwave energy is tuned to the frequency of water. So it matches the resonant frequency and it starts to create ionization, friction, heat, radiation, okay? That's how you heat up food. It's matching res uh, the, 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 frequency. the frequency. The human body is made of what? 72.8% like water. And the blood like 92, brain right. 80%. Exactly. Yeah. But the overall structure, just over 70%. But this is why it's so dangerous for our brain. Absolutely. You know, blood cancer and so on. You know? Yeah, and we're seeing with smart meters, uh, 5G, 4G networks, more blood cancer. I had a lady that came in my center hmm, about two months ago, AML, acute myeloid leukemia, and I've worked with this quite a bit. And it's from smart meter and uh, these networks that are coming, because they're microwave. So imagine she's being cooked all day, every day, and what happens? The blood is boiling. Absolutely. So they go in and, and of course they offer, which is really silly, um, a technique that hasn't changed in the last, what, 100 years is radiation and chemo. Chemo is under 3% effective across the board. I've just collected stats on this right. stuff. Yeah. It doesn't work. Yeah. Um, radiation, I grew up next to a nuclear facility. Why did I get into this? because radiation was creating continuous cells and causing what people dread. Would you move your family to Chernobyl? It fixes this all day long, doesn't it? <laughs> no, it speeds up cell division. At last moment, cell becomes a continuous cell, which is cancer, and then we have more of it. So that's why I don't But do you know, like, I mean, for, for even people who don't have this, like, detailed information, but it's very simple, as we right. work as a battery, radiation, and chemo cannot work in the first place because it's just like... It's positive charge, proton yeah. charge. The resting potential of a human cell is minus 25 millivolts. Exactly. So it drains our alkaline battery all day long. Yeah. So we don't get that reset value. And it's where the, you know, the drill doesn't get put back on charge. So it's not going to have any energy to turn the cycle, the Krebs cycle. It, it doesn't work. It so, I mean, so, I mean, basically it's like... It, it got so implemented in our brains and in our entire, like, you know, way how we see disease, how we see healing. Right. And, you know, like, I'm not a doctor, you know, like, my background is completely different. I got an accident into frequency, but now, like, I'm driving this bus, I'm not a guru, you know, like, just, you know, educate people. I'm right. happy when they join the Love Tuna movement. But it's so funny because everything, this is why I have so many different uh, people in podcasts is because I want to really educate people that it's like one big thing, you know, where the, where the collective it goes is, into it. It is, know, just share it, pay it for it. Yeah. Like I said, it's like we just bring in this knowledge. What is the real intent? Do you want to help people? Then share it. Exactly. You will keep it whole. I, I met, you know, brilliant scientists, doctors, inventors, all sorts of people. And um, the best thing is set it free, man. Let everybody have access to it. I mean, we're working on this, you know, our big idea will be that we all collect and share information. And, Absolutely. And, you know, like, I mean, we have a tool with the left, you know, what is just simple. It's yeah. just simple. And we call it a Trojan horse because, you know, everybody can breathe. They, they see the reaction right away. They 528 hertz does the magic to it. And then it's also an intention to invite love in your life, you know, what just raises your frequency. Right. And... Uh, and what you tell me, and we talked a lot of, you know, patients that you have, their frequency is so low, you know, because it's big, as, as, especially when, when you come in with classical treatments, you know. Yeah, so what it does is it just depletes the, the battery, and when the battery gets to a certain voltage, the cell will either 
you know, because poor copy, poor copy, um, death and apoptosis, it'll just die off. Mm. And so then things start to age really, yeah. uh, really fast. But by changing it and tuning it, love tuner, bringing up that frequency, you're restoring um, sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system, so the voltage goes back up. So you have your energy. We're energy. Everything's energy. Absolutely. If I take an atomic force microscope, anything I put in its field of view, is it solid or empty space? What's an atom? Mainly empty space. Yeah. So, but it's moving a certain vibration, which then this appears to be real. We're For solid. Sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. 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 All this stuff. Yeah. So, so what do you think, like, um, as a message? Because, like, a lot of people, and this is what I naturally don't want to do, like, with love, you know. We want to focus on love. We want to concentrate right. on the positive stuff. And you know, when you see it on a spiritual thing, is you know we're we're getting out of the dark ages. We're going into you know the the golden age, right. and everything is like speeding up. This is why we see all this craziness having around the world. You know what we have on the political side going on. What is happening in South America? So it's literally because the energy is really shifting. It's lifting upward. And, you know, like old patterns we are losing, but this is why it's so extremely crazy right now. Right. And so people, like at one point, they stop, like, you know, they, they literally ignore, you know, they, they, they go like, fuck all that, you know. And they, they go to the point where they say, you know, I just got fucking drunk, you know. And right. they don't care. They lose their spirituality. They give up. And, and then it comes also to, you said, right, they're paying with their, with their health of, right. of using the insurance, you know. And, and, and this will kill them. But at the end of the day, it's uh, what is the positive message? You know, what should people really do? What they can do on a small scale, you know, on a daily scale? I mean, I'm not talking only about love tuning, but what can they really do to raise their frequency and get out of this paranoia about like, you know, sending a blood sample in and getting back information which are not correct and going to a doctor right. who treats like, in a way where we all know it's not working anyway, you know, or or what, what happens if you get the diagnosis of cancer? What can you do? You know, because at this point you are sick, you have no, no motivation, your energy swings low, and uh, what should they do? I mean, and not everybody comes to Malibu and, and check out your studio, right. but where do these people get information from? Where do should they go, do we go to? Because when you got the diagnosed with like, I have cancer, you panic completely, you know? Why and, is it though? That's a good question. Why? Why is that? I mean, I don't know, because like, uh, if, if I would not have the knowledge to go to alternative sources, right. I would do the same thing. I would panic, and at one point, uh, I would go to a classical doctor, probably, you know, if I would not have, you know, the... I want to unlock that whole thing, because it's like, and this, this is what keeps people, um, you know, David Hawkins, uh, power versus force, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of, we'll use that as a measurement, because it's, it, it, it's fitting in what, what I'm going to say. So the whole program is fear-based. Sure. Okay, everything's fear. So when people hear they have a um, diagnosis and a prognosis of a certain amount of time and what sets in the frequency of fear, which is roughly around 190 to 200 uh, hertz, that frequency sets in the whole program subconscious now, it goes back to neurolinguistic. So words are very powerful, and people uh, mistake this. But if somebody's told something, and they choose to accept it, that program will eventually become uh, verified. And that program is what people set into. And they know this if, um, let's say, somebody goes in for a procedure or an operation. When they anesthetize a, a patient, they know certain words not to say during that operation because the subconscious mind, which is like a child, is listening all the time. So they, oh my God, they're going to die. Well, they can set a program that they die on the table. So the frequency of fear, when people hear cancer, they go right to fear. Sure. Uh, they have two months to live. Yeah. What if that stuff's not true? Because it's not. It's not true, but it's sure true. we know it is. But, but but the whole program is if you but watch what, news. But, but what stuff. would you tell people like when they get this thing? You know, like because this is <clears> everything. <throat> everything down spirals by this point. Exactly. So what happens is the whole body is 
in crisis with a voltage issue. Everything in our universe is electrical, positive, negative, neutral, and I'll get into that later. That's a whole nother dissertation. I'll mm. break it down. However, when people hear that, they go into fear. Well, Henry Ford said best, whether you think you can or you think you can't, either way is true. Mm. What I want to do is, what if we rephrased the terminology where, and I've studied with people that prove how these technologies really work, not what we're taught. Mm. And um, that became apparent when I was growing up and everyone was dying of cancer. Yeah. I couldn't understand that. So I went in on a journey and I found, you know, mentors and great teachers and stuff that found better ways to do stuff. And it's all been here. Just it doesn't make the disease maintenance model work, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. It's all about that. So everything with that program, we've been taught to fear it. We step into it and then we go through these programs that have never worked over the last hundred years. Chemo, radiation. I mean, chemo is under 3% effective across the board. Radiation speeds up cell division, causes cancer. So why would that work? Surgery, if they can remove it without disturbing it, well then great. But those things haven't worked. Have they? No, well, obviously they not. The obviously stats. not. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. The truth about cancer is, cancer is there as a last moment of defense to protect the individual because the immune system failed to respond to an infection. Mm. And a regular cell, so we're civilians, and we see somebody come in, they have a gun, there's no police officer, which is the immune system, and we grapple them, hold them to the ground. Mm. That's yeah. what cancer is. Exactly. It's life protective mechanism. It's fight or flight mechanism, and it's built into every single cell, 75 trillion cells. I don't mm. know who counted the cells in the body, but let's just say approximately. That would take some time anyway. Um, <laughs> but it's there to protect. Now, normally when we would grapple somebody home to the ground, someone would call 911, right? Mm -hmm. If 911 doesn't show up within a certain period of time, more people jump on. Mm -hmm. So the cell gets bigger and builds a bigger prison or a containment or facility around the infection. At that point, it no longer calls for the police to show up. How does it call the police? It took a little protein from whatever is in the center of the jelly donut, puts it up to the top. That's a little protein, antigen. Mm -hmm. That's a 911 call for discord. The, the police show up. Yeah. If they don't show up within 10 to 14 period day uh, cycle, it will divide again. Because it has insufficient cellular energy, it divides again and says suicide. So at this point, yeah. the cell is now 30 millivolts. It should be around 20, minus 25 millivolts. It will no longer call the police, so it goes undetected, maybe for months, years, whatever. Somebody comes in, they sneeze, you know, they have this pain in their back, they go in, they do a scan, CT scan, which is frequency, and now they see this big mass and say, well, you've got this mass, we have to biopsy it, mm -hmm. which is dangerous. Yeah, for sure, because, because you punctured through it. Sure. And now if it's a pleomorphic organism, meaning it will grow in four stages, that's what it means. That's proven by Dr. Virginia Livingston Wheeler in 1940. She was the head of the Presbyterian Hospital here in the United States. She goes over to Belgium. She gives her dissertation on pleomorphic organisms and how they morph into different sizes. When she comes back to the United States, she's relieved from her command. She yeah. fired. Yeah. She went against Louis Pasteur, and he was proven wrong by B. Chomp in 1900. It's pretty crazy stuff. Yeah, it is, it is. So they biopsy it, they release now, some of these things become like spores. They go through the entire system. This cell is trying to protect the rest of its family from this assailant and will go and metastases will happen wherever the infection goes. So that's not good. No. And they say needle biopsy, to you and I, through our regular vision, that'd be extremely small, right? It's a needle. Mm -hmm. Remember I said 120 of the micron. Sure. It's they just huge. carved yeah. a super freaking highway in that cavern and released all the prisoners. Yeah, and That's it spreads. It spreads everywhere. I know. The other thing, radiation breaks down the protective layer of the prison wall, and then all the prisoners run out. Chemo breaks down the protective layer, and all the prisoners run out. Plus, chemo ch changes the voltage and frequency of the regular healthy cell to a positive charge. Mm -hmm. It becomes continuous. 
this becomes continuous. It makes sense, right? Yeah. Everything is measured that way. So when, when you look at your work, for example, and you have like, you didn't want me to say it, but I have to say it because I know a lot you of people. It's fine. Uh, you have a lot of cancer patients and, you, and, and at Hans, and you really help these people. But what you told me also is like, you know, by the time people step out of their, of the um, whatever, regular health system and they come to you, there's also a shift already. But what you told me is like, every one of them, you gave a love tuner. Yeah, and, every single person. And I mean, first they start trusting you, you know, like right. they see their, their other way is not the right way. They first, the trust in you and the trust in frequency is actually trusting what we are, you know, we, right. are, we are light and frequency. And uh, what do you think the love tuner does for, well, anyway, for, for them? Puts them into a state of calm. Mm. They are now not in that state of fear, and that's that was it's brilliant because it wraps back into what I'm saying the frequency of fear. Everyone's oh my god, I have cancer, what do I do? Well, standard medical care offers three programs that haven't changed over the last hundred years, mm -hmm. which is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And everyone's sick and tired of being sick and tired, they yeah, think. Yeah. So, by giving them a love tuner, they're able to balance themselves so they're a parasympathetic and a sympathetic nervous system, they can handle that load a little bit it's like i'm cool you know yeah, yeah for sure yeah i can i can handle this and when you change the mindset thoughts become things and we set their target and goal and they achieve it yeah but they have to want to do it so that for that's, sure for that's sure the importance of this thing yeah yeah, yeah. and it's simple it's simple. easy Completely simple. Uh, aaron thank you so much for sharing your Thanks world better, i love it and uh and i hope I'm a lot of people to everybody everybody comes i'm just like here <laughs> there you go. There you go. Do this, and they're like, "What is this thing? A bird whistle?" I'm like, "No, let's yeah. go out and I'll show you how to use it." Yeah. So, so you have to educate them how to use it. As soon as I do it, they're yeah. they're good. Okay. I had, uh, uh, you know, and she's uh, I can't say the show, but it's a medical show and it's very uh, famous. I gave, and she's a big writer on it, and they're doing a little stuff of what we do um, in this program. They're going to start writing it into this uh, this TV show, but she was using it. And she like. Anytime all these people come in, whatever, you just take five, go outside, do the love tuner, yeah. come back. Okay, I'm ready. What do you want to talk? About? <laughs> Let's go. Go on. Yeah, so this is this is this healing yeah. right there. It's healing. I know. So this is as simple as you can get it. Yeah. And everyone can do this thing. I know. If we just did this, yeah, man, no war, right? Yeah, we Peace. will overcome yeah. in uh, one generation. Yeah. Even sooner. I'm. That's too long for me. That's too long. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm like the guy that needs it now. Yeah. Let's go now. Hey, so. brother. Thank All you right. so much. Love you. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having me.